Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast once more. This is episode 113, entitled Should We Give Our Clients Telephone Support? It was published on Thursday, the 31st of January, 2019. My name's Nathan Wrigley from pictureandword.co.uk, a small web development agency based in the north of England, and I'll be joined in a few moments by David Wormsley from davidwormsley.com because it's a discussion episode. We have these very regularly, and David Wormsley and I chat through something about web development or web design or WordPress. Today we'll be talking about the interesting subject of whether you should give out your telephone number and offer client support via telephone. Before we begin though, a few things, a few little bits of housekeeping. If you wouldn't mind going over to the wpbuilds.com website and using the menu items at the top, the first one that I want to point you at is the subscribe link. And if you click on the subscribe link, you'll be taken over to a page And on that page, you'll find a form for getting onto the WP Builds newsletter. You can join our Facebook group and there's also a YouTube channel where you can find all of this stuff if you prefer to access this from YouTube as opposed to a podcast feed reader, that kind of thing. But you can subscribe to our Messenger updates and Slack channel and so on and so forth. Also, if you wouldn't mind going onto the the homepage, there is a subscribe on iTunes link. And uh, it's always very nice if people leave us iTunes reviews. Apparently, iTunes is like the dominant platform for for podcasts. And so the the more reviews we get on there, the, the more it will become known that WP Builds is a thing. That would be great. Okay, also, if you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash deals, you can find a whole bunch of WordPress deals. We've got... 20% off uh, Project HODL and If So and WP Ultimo, 20% off Beaver Team Pro and 25% off Erin Flynn's courses, Main WP's there, Blog Vault, Malcare, Toolset, WP Security Audit Log and uh, 15% off Widget Options. There's a whole load of stuff and you can access it at forward slash deals and make yourself a little little bit of a saving on some WordPress products. Another one is wpbuilds.com forward slash webinars. We've got a couple of webinars coming up um, at the moment in the month of February. One is to do with Lifter LMS with Chris Badgett and one is to do with WebArc Security uh, with Oliver Sild. So get yourself signed up for those if you would like. And also I'm trying to push the contribute uh, option at the moment. If you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash contribute, you can come on and tell us something that you've done recently that you that you're very proud of, perhaps something to do with WordPress or a SaaS product or something. That would be great. And of course, forward slash advertise if you would like to advertise on the podcast and get your product or service known via our audience. We've got banner ads and we've got audio inserts as well. So thank you. Um, Much obliged to all of our advertisers. Speaking of which, today's WP Builds podcast is brought to you by Project Hoddle. Are you still using email for client feedback? Well, there's a better way. With Project Huddle, client feedback has never been easier. Point, click, and type interactive comments right on top of any website. Try a free demo at projecthuddle.io forward slash WP builds. And the Page Builder Framework. Do you use a page builder to create your websites? The Page Builder Framework is a mobile, responsive, and lightning fast WordPress theme that works with Beaver Builder, Elementor, Breezy, and other page builders. With its endless customization options in the WordPress Customizer, it's the perfect fit for you or your agency. Go to wp pagebuilderframework.com today. Speaking of the Page Builder Framework, I got an email from them the other day and I thought it was worth mentioning it at this point. They're offering a free license if you get involved with their translation efforts. They're trying to to get the the product so it's translated into as many um, languages as possible. And in return, they will offer you one of their premium add-on licenses worth $58. You can go and check that out on their website and they need things done, I think, by the 14th of February 
2019. So if you fancy trying that out and you speak another language, that might well be worth looking into. Okay, let's get on to the main event, the podcast itself. We're talking today about telephone support. Telephone for people can be an absolute nightmare. Perhaps you're really good at talking on the phone and it's super effective. Or maybe you live in fear of the phone ringing and hate talking to clients. Either way, we have a very long conversation, largely inspired by a thread in our WP Builds Facebook group. So thank you to all the people who got involved and gave us some thoughts for the podcast. I really hope that you enjoy listening to it. Dan, today's discussion is called Should We Give Clients Telephone Support? So I guess a bit of background to this one is that I asked this question in our Facebook group as I had a little bit of a meltdown about whether I should be giving support because I got a lot of new customers saying call me and we're not really set up for that. So I asked the question and Nathan, the the replies, weren't they? They were they were phenomenal, really. Yeah, dozens and dozens of replies. I will link to the thread if you're interested. Uh, mm. So you can go and check it out for yourself. But you do need to be a member of the WP Builds Facebook group because it's in that little group. But there were lots and lots and lots of replies and uh, each of them entirely different, which just goes to show. Yes. Well, it's such an open ended question that I asked and it was it was related to my little meltdown and everybody kind of helped me out because I thought I had it sussed really. I, I well, let me ask you, Nathan, first, we were going to do this at the end before we talked about what people said. But what do you do? OK, so I have all sorts of ways um, of communicating with clients. It just occurred to me as we were having our little chat before recording this that. Mm. I do give my telephone number away freely. So, for example, um, they, the telephone numbers are in all the footers to all the emails, so there's, there's nothing hidden there. But I, I do ask the clients when we begin on the process of building something, I do make it clear that they're going to use my ticketing system. Uh, mm. I, I, I will have that conversation with them and say, from now on, I'm only going to be looking for your queries about the website in the thread uh, of the task. So for example, I split the project up into little tasks and then each of those little tasks has its own like forum thread where I can reply and they can reply. So I ask them to honor that and I teach them how that system can be used. I've got a little video that I made showing them how it's done. I've also got an online point by point tutorial of which buttons to press um, and so on. And so that minimizes the phone calls quite a lot, but I, but I'm okay. My phone is set up to ring. I do make it clear that you know I'm not going to answer the phone outside of office hours. But for my part, I'm all right with people phoning me up. It's just me. It's just my little business. There's not phalanxes of people trying to phone me up. Usually, I'm working on one or possibly two things at a time. I know their mm. phone number. It's in my phone. I see it on the screen if they try to phone me. So I know who it is. Sometimes if I'm busy, well, actually a lot of the time if I'm busy, I will simply let it go to answer phone and judging on the, you know, the strength of the the message left in the answer phone, I'll I'll either reply quickly or not. Then, of course, Mm. there's the care plan stuff. So once the website's been finished, there's the care plan side of things. And I ask them to book in that time because depending on what plan they're on, they get 30 minutes or something of uh, my time a month. And I ask them to book it in and they go to a URL on my website and click click a few buttons, fill out their um, their, their details. It, it's not a WordPress thing. It's a SaaS product. So they have to retype in their, their details each time. But that works perfectly. Nobody, nobody seems to find that difficult to do. And most of the people that need the help yeah, use it. What about you? Yeah. Well, I thought I, in fact, I've talked on this podcast before about how proud I was of how I managed to run groups before and how we controlled the telephone support I had there. They had to leave a message for me and it had to be specific about what they needed so I could help them when they came back. Mm. Even if it was, as long as they were honest that they were just feeling down and needed a chat, as long as I knew what I was dealing with, it made things easier. But I think I got lost on this one because as you know, as I'm saying through this, I'm trying to kind of productize the service and keep the costs really low so we can accommodate some really low budgets for websites. So suddenly (laughs) I thought it was fine because everybody I dealt with with clients who knew me pretty much I wasn't getting any phone calls. I've got my telephone number on the website. It does say answer machine next to it. No one's 
ever rung it yet. So I don't hide that. Um, but just recently, because I've taken some new people from on the care plan, which my colleague did the website for, and I didn't really have those dealings with, they have that relationship with her before, which has obviously been one of call me. <laughs> right. So I'm getting these call me's and it's like, I, I don't really do telephone support because it's quite tricky for me to call people with sometimes the internet connection, also the backwards and forwards with the conversations. I've not had any lead up to them. So, yeah, so that's why. I, and I thought, should I be saying to these people, I don't do that because I've never needed it yet with other people. <laughs> that's where the group saved me, actually, I think, because they kind of telling me their stories. I mean, it made me realize that I needed to not change anything. I just needed with people who don't know me to actually just go with them and then let them know how it's going to be easier for the future. Yeah, I think one of the things that comes out of that thread is that everybody's business is entirely different. And because I would mm. I would say this next sentence is going to be true, I'm not entirely sure it is true. I would imagine that a lot of the people in our Facebook group are working in small businesses and very likely by themselves. And on mm. that basis, it's really up to you, isn't it? If If you are good on the phone and effective on mm. the phone, then that's that's perfectly legitimate the the opposite is true i suppose if you are ineffective on the phone and the you know talking to clients and all of that stuff really is not your forte and you you worry about it and you're not very good at getting to the point and, and saying hard truths out loud then maybe that's not your your best way of doing it the other yeah. the other thing i suppose is that with email and uh, chat widgets and text messaging and all of those kind of things there's very much a well obviously nobody can expect that conversation to start at a particular point you know you send out an email and you've got an expectation that it'll be replied to within well a day two days whatever it is that you that you understand that company's response time is whereas as soon as you've got on the phone you are Mm. kind of obliged to see it through to the end no matter what happens and of course, everybody knows that putting down the phone on somebody is is really considered very, very rude. Um, whereas with an email thread, you know, you can you can take that at your own pace. You can work out the answer before you re- write the reply, and so on and so forth. So I can see merits in both. Yes, I guess it depends on that the relationship that you've got with the person on the other end. If it's a very good relationship and they understand that you can't always pick it up. And they understand that you can't always give an answer. Yeah. Well, that was one yeah. of the things that I really struggled with when I started doing this. I really did think that I should know the answer to ev- everything to do with the websites. And I felt a bit embarrassed when I had to say, I, I don't know, I'm going to go away. And now I'm really happy doing that. I, I don't have the answer. I'll go and find out. Um, yes, I think people love that, actually. Yeah. It sort of does that to me. I really respect them. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I mean, that, that's just been born out of years of kind of fudging an answer and then working out the answer and going back and uh, saying, actually, we're going to do it this way. It, you know, nobody in my experience so far has said, uh, no, no, you need to know now. They're really happy <laughs> if you say, I, no, I'm not sure about how to work that out. Let me, let me go and exp- explore and I'll come back to you. Equally, the whole thing about plugins, you know, the, the conversation about, oh, well, I'm going to find a plugin, but I'm happy to have that conversation. Whereas before I'd kind of yes. be a bit vague about the fact that WordPress had plugins and I was going to go and buy a solution. I'm quite happy to explain that as well. So I, my thoughts on this are, I give telephone support usually... For my clients, it is metered by the amount of time they've got. It requires the client to to honor that. And, and yeah. really, honestly, I've never had a client really abuse it to the point where I've said, look, we're going to cut the phone off from you because this isn't working out. Yes. Do you know what? That's interesting, though, because that is one of the things. If you say, yes, we're going to offer the telephone support, there was one person, so I'm not going to say their name, uh, but they they had a real issue with one person who just calls them all times of the day mm. for really, really long chats. It seems clear to me that they've really got to like this person who did their website and they just really want to find any way to spend more time with them. Ah, um, right. Okay. Well, that's a really interesting, unique position, isn't it? I wonder if, um, I wonder if it's possible to have a different approach to different clients. You know, for example, if you've got a client who is 
very effective on the phone and it works between you and them and they mm -hmm. come to you do a phone call three minutes later you know what you've got to do and the phone is down whereas if you've got this client who it sounds like they're phoning up and just wanting a chat you know maybe, maybe yes. li literally wanting a chat about anything and the website <laughs> is kind of ancillary to that maybe that's a different approach and you have to say look please will you formulate your thoughts in an email first and then i'll phone you back with the answer or 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 even look i'm going to cut out telephone support because i've worked out that we've spent four and a half hours in the last month on the phone and and i you know, I'm, I'm struggling with that work hour balance. Yeah, it sounds like actually all the solutions that you've just mentioned and and other people in the group there just said that they put like things like Calendly and Book Like a Boss, those kind of systems mm. that can book the time. Sounds like the, the one who mentioned having somebody ringing too much could probably solve it if they did always let their phone go to answer machine and and you know just sent an email just saying book a time for our session and it had a you know because I, I imagine yours how long does your sessions allow usually for? it's restrict them? yeah usually it's 30 minutes there is an option for an hour but there's basically nobody uh taking that one and honestly i can get it's about coaching people i suppose isn't it and for the first couple of times they're on the care plan that half an hour never works it's either that they haven't got enough to ask me or they've got too much to ask me but over time as the months go on they get into the swing of what half an hour is worth and mm. i ask them to come to me with it all written down even if it's just mm. on a scrap of paper um that's fine but it it works it's it is impersonal isn't it there's no doubt about it it, it is a sort of impersonal thing going to a url and booking somebody's time in the mm. future it's definitely not as nice again the caveat being if you like using the phone it's definitely not as nice as that but you do end up on the phone but also because i think there is something about booking that system and you've got the in, in the system that i use there's these little buttons that you must press and the little <coughs> button has the time written on it so you select a yes. time by clicking the button and so it's pretty clear how much time you're getting and yes. also, I think it's okay at the beginning of the conversation to say, right, you know, um, we've got half an hour. Let's uh, let's crack on with it. And then mm. as the time is approaching the end, I sometimes do say, we've got 10 minutes left. Uh, how about we do one or two more of those things? And then anything that you we haven't managed to tick off your list, should we just put it on to next month's? Uh, care plan and, and invariably the stuff that's at the top of the list is the stuff they want to achieve most and the stuff that's at the bottom of the list is stuff that's kind of oh that'll wait um, yeah yeah so that's that's how it works for me what about uh, you, you know what, what about you have you yeah, got anything to well, add mm, i was just thinking really about this particular person who got too many calls and thinking about my colleague who really i guess was the buffer for me for a lot of the jobs that we were doing and realizing that when i used to uh, when I would have my sort of appointed calls with her, when we were talking about some work, we she was nearly always taking client calls. She was always, in fact, if we were messaging, she was saying, sorry, just a client on the phone. And I, of course, knew what work she was getting because we were working together. And I, my biggest fear was ending up in her situation. But also I'm, what I'm realizing as I'm inheriting these clients who say, call me, it's probably one of her biggest strengths as well because mm. um, she was the local person who they trusted. Yes. Uh, I don't think she got the balance right. I, I think she would probably say that right. She probably was too friendly and too open. And they were, there was that, she didn't have such a professional relationship with all of them. A lot of them were involved in her life in other ways, a lot of these clients. So it's very tricky to draw that line. And that's maybe what this person's having with that, you know, where for me, it's quite simple. It is kind of a, I've got one get out. We mentioned this actually about local. You said the word local. If you're me and you're in a different time zone, that restricts the amount of time that you've got for phone calls, you know? Yes, yes, yeah, it does. I suppose it also depends very much on the, the nature of what it is that you're dealing with. You know, if it's reactive stuff where something has gone wrong, um, I don't know, yeah. they've deleted a post or for some reason some... Well, the, the most common things that seem to go wrong is that, you know, some kind of s element of styling breaks down and, you know, you update a plugin and, the, somehow the CSS class or the selector that you've used breaks and so a red thing becomes blue or, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And they phone up 
and so they want it fixed now. That yeah, I can kind of understand that, and I try to be accommodating because if something's hideous on their site suddenly, and it's really not their fault, I do take that as part of what I need to do. And if I can fix it quickly, I will. Like I say, I'm I'm not a I'm not a gigantic company, and if I can manage to fit these things in, I will. Um, yes, and, and I'm I'm all right with that. Uh, I think yeah. if you go down the approach that everything has to be automated, absolutely everything must be automated and everything must be working. It is the point, right? I suppose if if you if everything must be working in your favor, then mm. that's wrong. That's what I yes. think. If if everything is tipped so that it's easier for you, then then in the end it's not that easy for the client probably and you've got to sit, you've got to meet them halfway they're all different so i think a, a, a bit of accommodation is fine having said all of that i'm not overworked to the point where i'm exasperated and like super duper stressed about things so if that were the case and then maybe that would change the complexion of it and the, the phone goes out the window yeah, you know, I mean, he won't mind us mentioning his name. Jonathan Paris was the one who sort of said, yes, you should. We should be providing it. And he was, you know, this industry is too comfortable behind their computers. Mm. And, you know, you need to put a face and a voice behind the service and build that trust and relationships and retention. And I thought, you know, it's a really good challenge actually out there. I mean, it's not practical for everybody, obviously. It depends on the service you're going to sell. Uh, but... It, I, you, in a way, you were just saying the same thing, not to end up. I, th I think it's our biggest strength now, isn't it, to actually play on the, the service side of things because um, a friend of ours, Paul Lacey, was only he did a post somewhere talking about the fact that uh, the, the future of jobs and stuff and how technology is changing and how people will rely on us for our technical skills won't be so strong, but they will always rely on us for this kind of those kind of human interactions and things where they need to talk about strategy and stuff. Yeah, and also, you know, if you think about it, if you had a if you had a website built on say Squarespace, um mm. the only reason that you've done that is 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 budget and ease. Mm. You won't have mm. any loyalty to them. You know, mm. so when it's time to look at a new website, you won't think, "Oh, I must go with Squarespace because <laughs> uh, because it's been you know wonderful and they've been able to help at, at all points because it's not going to be like that but if you can if you can position yourself as some uh, friendly custodian of their website who is available kind giving of your yes. time and and helps them yes. i think i think ultimately that's the place you need to be because you will be worth more than the than the fee that you're being charged and they'll appreciate that because you've helped them out in the past uh, it's difficult it is hard to how to get the exact thing right. Do you, do you want to go through some of the answers that we received and just see the way that other people have approached this and what their ideas were? Because it might be interesting and something might pop up in what somebody said and you think, oh, I never thought of doing it that way. How, what do you think? Yeah, well, uh, what, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just looking through some of the ones I've just peppered in here mm. so we can remind ourselves. I mean, one point that Mark James meant, he asked the question early on, was does that mean uh, answer phone service provision? So, you know, uh, and I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good thing to have, really. I, I find it difficult to have an argument not to have that. Do you have an it, answer phone set up on your the phone that you yeah, described that never rings? <laughs> It's the thing that stops us calling each other because <laughs> it's Skype. Yeah, it's a, it's a London number, but it's actually Skype. And okay. It's to go straight into answer machine, which is why we can't connect to each other when we're trying to Skype for these recordings. Oh, but yeah. what? So if Skype yeah. is off, it, it, it just goes straight to the answer machine as if somebody's on the phone. Exactly. But okay. actually... It's it's permanently set now, so we just that's why we when you try and connect with me, we have a bit of difficulty. But yeah, it goes straight in now because I'm not taking any phone calls at all. Ah, I see. Um, okay. Because I'm not. I'm generally I'm not set up on the device anyway to be able to. So they have to leave a message. No one's used it. So yeah, I yeah. um I I have an answering machine. I don't have a a real in inverted commas phone. I have a voice over IP phone yes. uh, there's a company called sipgate i should make a video of this actually because it's entirely possible to have mm. a free inbound email uh, sorry inbound uk telephone number with any time uh, any area code using sipgate and you can connect it to your your android phone or whatever so i i have that on my desk and i've got it to 
um, ring for five times, which I think is not that long. It's probably about 25 mm -hmm. seconds or something. And then it goes to answer machine. And if I'm sat here um, and I recognize the number and it, I know it's something that I need to, to deal with, I will pick it up. And if I don't recognize the number or I am otherwise engaged, I will leave it and let it go to answer machine. And I would say that the vast majority of the people that phone me leave a message um, because they're phoning mm. for something and they've kind of worked out over time that I do actually respond. So what tends uh, to happen is I, and I just knowing me, knowing the way my brain works, uh, if I'm busy, it goes to answer machine, but within a couple of hours, I'll listen to that message. I won't leave it for a day because I'll then I'll forget that I've got an answering machine message. Um, but the nice thing about this SIPgate thing is if you do get an answering machine message, it puts it into your email as well. So you get an email with a, a, a WAV file, which you click on and it delivers it into your email inbox, which is quite nice. So that's wow, the way yeah. that's the way I do that. And uh, yeah, maybe I should make a little video of that because it's quite good. But not everybody would have an answer machine, um, but I do and it does ring and there is a chance that it will, will actually be connected to me and I'll pick it up. I've got a question for you. Does mm. that system, I'm sure it's out there, or I've dreamt this, but I think some of them will co actually convert the the message left into text for an email. Yeah, no, mine doesn't, or at least I've never seen it. Essentially, it just says, you know, missed call or something. There's a standard um, email line, you know, subject line. It says something like email missed. And then you look mm. in and it tells you what the phone number was, what the time was. And then there's a... a um, like an attachment, which is a WAV file, and you just click on it. And on your mobile phone or um, on your computer these days, when you click on that, it automatically plays it in the browser. So that's fine. Or your email client on your phone. So you just get it straight away. Um, and it works really well. But it's completely 100% free. There is no cost incurred whatsoever. But you cannot phone out. But that's fine because right. I have a mobile phone and I use that. So it's just a way of... It was in the day when I think having a landline number was important. It kind of felt more real. I'm not sure if that's still the case. I don't know if having the landline feels more authentic or professional, but that's the reason I set it up anyway. Yeah. No, I still think it does. And I have mm. this London number, which is a complete lie because I'm so rarely in London, but I still think it does anchor to the fact that's where I belong, mm. which is still true. Um, but, uh, there was one other thing that's never even got mentioned in this. I don't know if it's relevant, but there is perhaps one argument for um, telephone numbers out there is that uh, you, you can, if you've just got the one number, you can end up with lots of sales calls coming in, even on my Skype number, which is effectively the same as what you're doing. Um, it's I'm, the only messages I ever get or the calls I get on it are all spammers. I get on my personal phone, my personal mobile phone i get several of those a month um but mm. on my um on my business number i don't seem to get any i, d I have no idea why that would be uh, presumably i'm on some kind of database somewhere that's being shared around and that that landline in inverted commas my voip um number hasn't made it onto that database so no it's nothing that i have to worry about as yet you wait. Mm. <laughs> <It'll happen. laughs> no, I get them all the time. And one of them that comes, they, they, they've been going at it for months, but they are uh, the people who call themselves GoDaddy. Um, so they obviously must know that I have something to do with domain names or something, but right. they're not GoDaddy. Right. And uh, I don't think anybody ever got to the point where they found out what exactly it is they're selling. But <laughs> As a total and utter aside, for some reason, yes. this, this Christmas holiday, I ended up, and I do not even know how it got onto my Facebook screen, but in the right-hand side, I was looking at something and I clicked on one of those videos at the right-hand side. There's a whole load of people who... They make YouTube videos where they take over the person's machine who has phoned up to try and hack them. Oh, so somebody wow. phones up and it's invariably from an Indian call center. And whilst they think they're about to they think they're about to take over this person's machine, the opposite happens. This guy, <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of them who make these videos, they take over the hacker's machine. And then, like, sock all of their, you know, data out and everything, and then lock them out of their own computer. Anyway, <laughs> a total aside, but quite yeah. interesting. Uh, if I can remember to put it in the show notes, I will. Who else have we got then? Who else said okay. things? 
Des, I mean, Adam Lacey was saying, yes, uh, I don't know why I should read out publicly on this one, but he was saying that there can be more than difficult, but 99 people, 99% sorry, of people do the emails with him. But, you know, he keeps that there anyway. He says invariably it tends to be a bit of a waste of time because he still asks them to email him yeah. <laughs> after the call. <laughs> but, you know, for efficiency, it's not great, but, it, you know, he does it. And Well, that's interesting because um, I have exactly the opposite opinion about that in that I am more efficient on the phone. I, I am a firm believer that in two minutes i can get to, to the nub of a problem which would take me four emails to type out so um that's really interesting uh, but it just works differently to me you know it depends on what what your what your take is yeah yeah sean morgan he's another one who says that he uses as did adam uh, uses a system so they can book the calls Dave, uh, oh, sorry, Cookie? sorry, just to stop us there, that might be no. quite an interesting one. Um, I use a system called Book Like a Boss. Looks like mm -hmm. Sean Morgan uses Calendly, yeah. but I expect there's a whole other one, a whole load of other ones. There's another system called Cogsworth, and then there's a whole yeah. raft of uh, WordPress plugins that you could use to do that booking. Um, and usually they sync with your. Uh, calendars for availability so for example my system doesn't show appointments which are already taken but also it doesn't show appointments where other calendars so for example I've got um, a calendar with personal things you know I'm going swimming or whatever if I'm going swimming then it will also say no that time's not available um, and they're very, they're very clever these systems and they work really really well my, yeah, I mean, I love it. And I have a booking system here. And I mentioned this, I think, I hope I haven't mentioned it in this recording, but I, I, my biggest fear with those is that I'll get a, a call me to <laughs> to ask for support to fill out the yes. <laughs> calendar <-ly. laughs> yeah. with some people. That's yeah. my only fear with it. Yeah. Well, I have a stock image, which, which is an amalgamation of two or three images. Um which just show how to book with that system, just being, in case it's not obvious. Actually, there is one field on my booking system, which is kind of hidden. I use it for the podcast, actually. And, and it's the, the time zone field. And it, it doesn't look like it's a drop down because it's, you know, a, a normal drop down. It uses the UI of the uh, the browser and you can see it's a different gray color with a border. Well, they've my system have taken a clever approach that it just looks like plain text. It just looks like ordinary text with an arrow next to it. So a lot of people booking on to the podcast think that it's already selected their time zone, but it but it didn't. It's always in GMT. So uh, there are caveats with that, so yeah, there are there is a necessity, I think, to teach them. But one image that I drop into an email explains how that works. Yeah, yeah. There's Dave Cockin uh, who says, "Well, I think a few people just say really has a few clients that you know that he's happy to give out the number for, but they're only calling him a couple of times a year, mm. you know, no circumstances." And I think that's probably you know there is an element where you're always just going to judge the clients you have isn't there you know you're just going to decide you're not going to have put everybody through exactly the same system yeah I've, you... I've definitely had fear without mm. doubt i remember <clears throat> really fearful conversations where i've picked up the phone and been thinking oh what what is going to happen during this conversation you know i'm running late it, I, I know that what i've built isn't ultimately <clears throat> what they wanted or something you know some and and those conversations can be horrible but i'm not sure that hiding behind email is going to solve it they just you you know we've all been in that situation where customer support is done via email and you get annoyed when they don't answer the question that you so painstakingly wrote out <laughs> as an email and it was three days until the reply arrived so and that's what jonathan yeah. perez says isn't it which you mentioned yeah. earlier it's uh too it too <clears throat> comfortable in this industry being behind a computer Actually, talking to somebody puts face to face. You know, I think there's there's an importance in that. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to check with something on that. There is a when somebody writes "call me," you just kind of alluded to it. It it feels a little bit to me sometimes like I get a bit of fear because it's almost like you know, see me in my office, isn't it? <laughs> yes, naughty boy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't know what when somebody does it and it's out of context. I I told you this earlier. Shall I just repeat it? Mm -hmm. The little story. 
that this one got me. Somebody came on our care plan. My colleague did the site. There were last people in before she packed in. And I hadn't done any work with them. And uh, they, they sent in something to her, which she forwarded to me, which was really a job, not in our care plan. But I just did it for them. And uh, <laughs> then we closed the ticket because there was no sort of thank you for this. <laughs> and uh, after a week later, and then came back, call me. We are not happy at all. And um <laughs> it was worth doing. I mean, it got my back up a little bit because we'd done this thing, which really we shouldn't have done. It was a job that they needed doing a fix that needed to be paid for. We did it. But, you know, I mean, she was quite angry for a little while. And then she realized it was her computer and I'd have fixed it. And she was very apologetic then. But she was lovely by the time the, the phone call gone. And I don't think without that little without that phone call, as you pointed out, it wouldn't have gone in a nice way, you know. I think also, just, yeah, sorry, you were going to carry yeah. on. No, no, it was just that. It was just there was something about the, the phone dialogue that made it uh, better than it would have been if it had been concluded over email. Yeah, I, I think, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure this comes down to your individual capacity and capabilities and desires and likes surrounding speaking on the phone. But if you're good at the phone, I think you should use it. It's a real good little tool, isn't it? And if yeah. you can be... F- uh, if you can be funny or end it on a laugh or a positive high note, and also if you can make them um, realise, actually, you just phoned, we just had a phone conversation where it was entirely your fault, but you got angry. Well, they they might end up sort of going away yeah. uh, thinking about that and thinking, okay, okay, lesson learned. I won't, I won't do that again kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next time I'll just email it. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have a phone uh, conversation. But, yeah, the idea of call me. Yeah, it does sound a bit scary, doesn't it? What does James Barrett say? He says, regarding telephones, I do most of the time find it quite helpful to uh, over trying to do emails with some clients. I think we've mentioned that. I found that Mm. I spend 30 minutes writing an email that would have taken me a five-minute phone conversation. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Yeah. But he doesn't like talking on the phone. But uh, but it's it's better than the despised emails. Yeah. yeah, but he so does what I love the most, you know, which is, I guess, in the same territory. But I love to have um, the conference calls. So he likes to use them like uh, Skype or Zoho Assist. And I use a peer in with our name on it. And, and people just go into the browser and have a chat. And that's a, an appointment. So it's like a telephone call, isn't yep. it? But we'll yep. get to see the faces and can share a screen, which is most of the time the most effective thing. So when they're saying about, you know, that bit on my site there, what page is that yes. on? Somewhere yes. down, you know, you could just go look at it, you know, and point at it. It's so much nicer. Anyway. There's, um, there's a service that I've used in the past called Crank Wheel. And it's quite an interesting uh-huh. amalgamation of, it's like, how to describe it? Basically, the idea is that you are on the phone, the actual phone, and then mm. you run this thing called Crank Wheel in the browser, and then mm. when you switch it on, it gives you a URL, really, really tiny URL. I can't remember what the what the domain is they've got, but it's very small. Um, and you then say that to the client over the phone. Mm. They open it on their browser, and they see what your screen is doing, but there's no audio, none. So it's kind of a mixture of both. It's you on the phone, but looking at the screen. And I've used that a few times where the the client hasn't got the the software. Like for example, they just don't have Skype, um, yeah. but they are at a computer, or they um, or, or we've just been on the phone and we're having a phone conversation. And it just occurs to me actually it would be ten times easier for this thing that we've now got into if I shared my screen rather than going right. Let's hang up and get onto Skype. I just say right, okay, now. Go and open this URL, and then we'll you'll see what I'm on about, and it works totally perfectly well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the, the thing, isn't it? Most of the time, while I was almost thinking about no phone calls, because it always works better when we've actually got proper chat where I can screen share with them. Mm. But you know, I'm a bit more inclined now after hearing everybody out that to sort of just go with what they want and then see if I can adjust people to mm. what might be better. <laughs> yeah. I think say, no phones. Yeah. J- James Barrett also has the point that it's, it's possibly a, a good little trick right at the beginning of the phone conversation to say how much time you've got available. Yes. So for example, right at the beginning, say something along the lines of, okay, I've got, I've got 30 minutes before I've got another appointment or whatever. Yes. Um, so let's get into it. And then, of course, if 30 minutes isn't going to be enough, you could 
immediately stop that phone conversation and say, right, well, let's let's book it in for whenever uh, a week from now, or let's double up the appointment time for next month or something. So that's quite a good little strategy. Um, limiting your big. amount of availability before the conversation begins is quite clever. Yeah, absolutely. So you do, I know. You yes. do it on me. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Yeah. Because I do have stuff going on. And, and I think it's, I, I, I think I learned that from WP Elevation, but I think it's a fairly neat strategy. Nobody ever got offended by you saying at the start, look, I've only got, I've got 30 minutes available. Uh, so yeah. is, is that all right? Nobody's going to say, no, no, yeah. you've got to give me an hour of your time. <laughs> well, I've got to go to the, collect my kids from school or whatever it might be, you know, so I think that's fine. What is Robbie Lawrence says, say, sorry, uh, clients on care plans have my number, mm-hmm. but I don't publicize it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So you provide it when they're on your care plan. I respond quicker to emails and I don't have voicemail turned on. So the majority have just figured that figured out to email. Okay. So give your, give your telephone number just to people that are on your paid care plan <clears throat> Don't put it on your website. That's interesting. But prioritize email. So if somebody does phone up, they're going to get a quicker response from email and they'll figure that out quickly themselves. That's mm. right. interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think that's my that's been largely my approach, I think, really mm. before until I had to question it. But yeah. yeah. We should mm. have said that most of the all of the things that we've said so far are people who do use the phone and they're saying yes, we think it's a good idea. They are to pretty have much, phone. yes. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll come to the nose, the opposite in a minute. Uh, man, m- m- yes. Manuel? Ma- Manuel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think well, I said Manuel. Yeah, Rosenboom. Okay. I hope you said this right. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about the name. Um, since we deal with bigger companies most of the time, there are phone calls, quite a lot, but not support stuff. If that comes up during a call, I would ask for sending us an email, but more strategic calls and coordination stuff. Oh, okay, I mean, during the build yeah. process of a website, I think there's you. I think you have to have a bit of that, don't you? You have to have a bit of flexibility. Like I said, my preferred method was absolutely put drop it into the th- thread of the task mm-hmm. in my client software. But um, mm-hmm. I think when you're building somebody's website, I think you know. I think it's okay to take to take some to take some phone calls during that time. For, uh, yeah, for me particularly, I think you know because I've got a very build days, you know. So those days that we can we can talk all day if you like on the phone, but yeah. it'll just mean that they won't. They'll have to build buy another build day yes. if they want to get the, yeah. the thing built. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And flexible. then the last positive that we've got written down is more. More Cohen says maybe yeah. don't say that you don't offer phone support, but don't answer when they call, and then say oh. I often have a f- the phone on silent or I live in an area with very bad reception. Next time it's best to send them an email. Okay, so she's sort of com- coming up with a strategy for diverting them from the yes. from the phone toward the email by saying my phone was on silent. Actually, my phone, I have a new mobile phone and it's got a dedicated button on the. It's an Android phone, but it's got a button on the side to turn the volume off. Let's so you flick this button. Yes. Man alive, the amount of times I've put it on to silent and then just forgotten for days. And then look back yes. and thought, oh, oh, I had a few phone calls during that time. So yeah, I think there's, I think that's a good idea. So Moore's strategy is she wants them to email, but she has a phone, but the phone mm. is a is a a useful way of getting them to start using the email. A bit like I remember who it was, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, somebody earlier up the list who said that um, you know over time they kind of figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Right, we've done the yeses. Now we're going on to the noes. These are the people who uh, yeah, would rather not apologize. use the phone. Yeah, we missed some people out. We just grabbed a handful of these, didn't we? Yeah, to talk about so there were other people's comments on there. So we leave one of them because we just mentioned that was the person who was struggling with it, and I put her under no. But in fact, you know, she, I think she probably still keeps her her um, telephone available. She was just struggling with one client who mm. was taking up too much time. But um, we've got Michael Miller who says no, because it takes him um, two to three times longer on the phone than an email. Wow, but he that's does get so it. opposite to my experience. That's fascinating. Wow, I can just achieve much more during a phone conversation than I can with email. So uh, the, what can we say about that other than we're all, we're all different, aren't we? <laughs> And maybe it's the context of what he does. I mean, yes, you know, he's, yes. he's 
very much develop a mentality and get stuff fixed well, doesn't he? He's that kind of logical type of person, as I know him from other groups who, you know, if you want stuff doing, he'll do it. And maybe it's just the way he works. Uh-huh. And, but he does, say, he does say here, he gets it. Some people, <laughs> you know, are just too lazy or not, not able to draft a concise email to get to the point. So, you know, there are, so he doesn't acknowledge, of course, there's advantages to calling somebody. So I guess it's what you're thinking about, isn't it? What work needs doing. Yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. And the, the difficulty of the task. Um, yeah. You know, if, like, like we said, it, I mean, basically, this whole conversation is ultimately going to boil down to whatever works for you. And if Michael <laughs> yeah. Miller, if it doesn't work for him, an email is considerably longer. He's written two to three times longer. Then that's a no brainer. Go on email because yeah. that's a lot of time saved. But no, also, isn't. I suppose, accommodate those that just don't want to email you. You've got to be prepared to cope with them a little bit. Yeah. Do you not think there might be just looking at it? Because we're all doing different. Some of us are just building the sites that they need and not necessarily getting too involved in the perhaps digital marketing strategies, which might, you know, uh, might require a bit more general chat. Yes. I also just think that some people are just born talkers, aren't they? I don't mean that in some kind of nurture versus nature type thing. I just mean Mm. some people are just very good at talking. Mm. Um, And so that is their strength and that asset would be good to leverage. I, 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 I don't want to blow my own trumpet because I don't mean that I'm effective, but I am quite good at talking. And, you know, if you put me in an empty room, I can talk. Um, Mm. So that works for me. But you're lousy on the trumpet. Oh, awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <don't. laughs> There's a third option. Yes, no, or play the trumpet instead. <laughs> um, okay, so Jenny Brown says, we yes. don't do calls. Uh, it's just not a practical way to send code, links, instructions, names of services, refer back to info later, or to have writing, sorry, written what we said. Plus, with time zones, we'd be making calls at crazy times and we could only deal with one to two customers in any way, any, any way at one time. That's absolutely a great answer, isn't it? I like that because, yeah, you can't send links. You can't send code. Uh, I think you can do instructions, but it's harder. Definitely mm. harder, without a doubt. Names of... Yeah, and there's no paper trail. Perfect, unless you record it, I suppose, which most people would think is weird. Um. Mm. Yeah, good good rebuttal there, Jenny. I like that. I think all of that makes perfect sense. If you're sending code and links, do it in an email. The amount of times I've been on phone calls and said, oh, I'll send you the link after we finish. That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. Um, and, and again, it, and I suppose maybe it's a bit like Michael as well in that, that it's, it's thinking about the more practical sides of getting the website built, you know, which is, yeah, it is 10, that's, more difficult to talk about, isn't it? Mm. The strategy stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, and uh, I've just put, uh, we haven't copied everybody over, but we have got uh, Athon in here as well, who actually is part of a further conversation because he's struggled with it. So he's generally on the the not having um, uh, the phone. Mm. But, uh, you know, so he'd prefer to have a ticketing system in place if there was something offering live chat. But yeah, it's one that he's still working out, which I think probably all of us will be rethinking it again, as I have been. I suppose that the difference with with it, with the email versus, well, or chat or whatever, anything versus the phone, is that the phone really does cut your thought process right in two, doesn't it? You know, if you're middle, if you're in the mm. middle of doing something and the phone goes and you answer it, it is very hard to keep the concentration on the thing that you were working on, and you don't have any control over when you. Um, when the phone, excuse me, when the phone rings, whereas yes. if you go down the the email approach, there is of course that oh I'm just shutting down email for the next six hours and I'll look at that um, when when I've got a moment to do it. So there is something to do with that because you can you can orchestrate when that stuff comes to your attention, whereas the phone is is not that. So yeah, the, the silence feature on the phone I think kind of gives a bit of that with the with the opportunity to leave a a phone message. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it comes, you know what, all of this, I think all of our relationships with clients, it comes down to our own perception of fairness and their perception of fairness. And that's always going to be different, whichever side you're on. And you kind of got to get this balance, haven't you? It might, it, if it doesn't matter if you logically present the fact that they would be much better doing it the route that you suggest for efficiency. Yeah. If they don't feel that's fair, it's going to go 
horrible, isn't it? It's, uh, and I think that's it, isn't it? And if you can convince people your route is, and, and they never use the telephone, then you can have that policy, can't you? And it all works, you know, tickety-boo. I wonder if, because I've seen this advertised before with lots of platforms, they their highest tier... So let's say they've got three tiers. They've got the free tier, the medium tier, and the high tier. Sometimes it will deliberately say in the medium tier, email support. And then Mm -hmm. in the highest tier, it will say email support and telephone support. I wonder Mm. if having telephone support could be um, a feature of your care plan uh, as a differentiator from the cheaper care plan, you know, if somebody actually would would like telephone support, I I, I couldn't pull that off because there's just not enough compulsion, I think, for people to pay the extra in, in my case. But I wonder if in your business listeners there is, you know, we've got a, a care plan with email support or chat support, whatever. Um, yes. And but then we've also got the the telephone support, and we'll phone you up, we'll we'll gladly accept your call, um, and we'll chat within business hours between these times and if the price is right and it it rings enough for you to make money or rather it doesn't ring enough for you to make money maybe there's something in that yeah do you know i feel bad now because some smart person said something very similar that you could just you know add it as an add-on ah well there you go you see maybe maybe it Mm. was me i don't think it was me but uh, they were obviously far more forward thinking than me i like eric strickland's um comment his (laughs) is a one word uh response it's just basically nah nah don't, (laughs) don't do telephone support so yeah uh do we feel that we've done this subject justice Yes, I do. Well, justice, yeah, that's going a bit too far, but uh, we've done it. Yeah, so to sum up, do what you want, yeah. <laughs> whatever works. And uh, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I will um, I will say that, that that particular podcast has been done and dusted. Thanks, David. That was a great conversation. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. Certainly an interesting one. And thanks to all the people who made the effort to write in our Facebook group and offer us suggestions for what this episode might have been about. Certainly appreciate you listening. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by Project Hoddle. Are you still using email for client feedback? Well, there's a better way. With Project Hoddle, client feedback has never been easier. Point, click and type interactive comments right on top of any website. Delegate, manage and resolve issues with your team. Get quick, clear approval from your clients. White label it and look like a pro. Try a free demo at projecthoddle.io forward slash WP builds. And we thank them for their support of the WP builds podcast. We thank you also for making the effort to get this far and listening to the podcast. Join us on Monday if you fancy getting a whole load of WordPress news. We do that at 7am UK time on a Monday. We release the WordPress weekly news from the previous week. But apart from that, it only remains for me to fade in some terribly cheesy music and say bye-bye for now.